1-800-288-KISF. And a good morning to you. Welcome to the Open Line program for the Sunday Father's Day, the 19th of uh, June, 1994. I'm Bob Slade, and joining me, Brother M. Toomey. There you go, Brother James M. Toomey. And, uh, Tombs, we're going to jump right into this show because... You mean this show already jumped into us, brother? <laughs> <laughs> there ain't been one thing to talk about today. That is true. and that O.J. O.J. Simpson. And uh, it's been on the minds of a lot of listeners out there. I know and people have their own uh, thoughts about this particular story. We're going to get to those phone calls in a second. But we have a, a panel of guests with us that we're going to uh, introduce uh, to our uh, listeners. Uh, one of the gentlemen has been with us uh, numerous times before. He's our resident clinical psychologist. He's Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Dr. Nice, Gardier? Yeah, nice to be back from the Fortress of Solitude. Man. You guys don't call me anymore. What's up with all of that? <laughs> You'll be called a lot now, okay. brother. Anyway, Dr. Gardier, uh, uh, welcome back. It's good to see you again. Always, and, a, always a pleasure. And uh, just unfortunate <laughs> this this particular story, but uh, we're going to get these into circumstances. It's just right. terrible. Yeah. yeah. And we also have with us uh, uh, Doctor. I'm mean, Doctor. I'm going to be a doctor now, but he's an attorney and a writer. Uh, he is a uh, Bob Pickett, Robert Pickett. Uh, he's been doing this for 22 years. He's a former uh, assistant uh, counsel to the governor of New Jersey. He was admitted to the New Jersey and Michigan and U.S. Supreme Court bars. And he's also former national president of the Black American Law Students Association. Yes, sir. Mr. Pickett. <laughs> that's long credit, brother. Welcome yeah. to the show. Oh, glad to be here. <laughs> you know, it was hard to get this brother, Bob. I, had to, I, had to, I actually had to pay him. His <laughs> brother's real busy, but he, he said he'd do it as a solid for us. <laughs> uh, we really do appreciate it. Let's just jump right into it. First of all, I'm going to start with you, Tombs. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, of course, everybody was talking about it. I was calling you up. Yeah, Yo, man. Tombs, yeah. check this out. Unbelievable. Man, it was unbelievable. Uh, but you know me, brother. I'm always going for that third answer. Mm -hmm. To me, I believe it was orchestrated. You believe this? Now, I know somebody in the audience said, "Oh, this is crazy." You know what I really feel is that the attorney knew, and the letter was written to garner the support for an uh, insanity plea that is going to be placed on this case. And I think, just like the Menendez case. His ex-wife will be put on trial. Like the Menendez, in the Menendez case, uh, the parents, the dead parents, really actually ended up on trial. And they beat the murder rap. I think this will be one of the most brilliantly orchestrated things that we've ever seen. I think the, 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 the charade of the, of the car chase, which wasn't a chase. They were only going at times 15 miles an hour. But you've never, ever seen anything like this. I mean, I'm watching the NBA playoffs, baby. Bang. Everything took secondary posture to this. And I think if this is what they were trying to do, they could have not have orchestrated a better thing in Hollywood. I think this sets up the whole thing for his insanity plea. And deeper than that, I think the response of people was unbelievable. When I saw him driving up into the police station and there was this long line of people, you know, with, with cards, to, you know, we love you, Juice, save the Juice. I really think that we're going to watch something uh, be done in the legal system that, at least in my lifetime, I haven't seen. I think his wife will be put on trial, or his ex-wife, pardon me, and the person that she was with, who they're now portraying as a sort of gigolo, that he was on studs. I just saw that clip the other day. So watch this very carefully. I think O.J. will beat this as a murder rap and get off with manslaughter. In other words, he will not get the uh, gas chamber. No, baby. All right. Uh, we're going to kick this around a little bit. I'm going to start with uh, Bob Pickett. Uh, of course, uh, you know, with this... Uh, the, the the chase uh, uh, actually not really a chase a uh, caravan so mm -hmm. to speak that which uh, went mm -hmm. down the freeways of Los Angeles mm -hmm. as this was going on and they claimed that OJ was in the back seat of the the, uh, the vehicle uh, threatening to kill himself had a gun to his head at at times and and that sort of thing uh, would this be a could this be used as a, by the defense as a possible um, um, a, a mechanic, uh, a possible mechanism for some sort of insanity plea, do you think, or what? It certainly can. I think that what, what, what that event uh, illustrates is a manifestation of his insanity. Uh, and I think that uh, they needed some illustration of that. And certainly that long chase, that 60-mile uh, adventure, uh, clearly illustrated that something was amiss, something was wrong here. Um, O.J. at that point was a prime candidate for bail. And it was mm. just mm. just unlikely that he should run because he could have gotten bail, posted bail, walked out <laughs> in a plea of not guilty. But even in a double homicide, away. even if he was charged with uh, 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 two counts of murder? Yeah, I think, that, you know, the fact that he came back from Chicago, the fact that uh, he made himself available to the police, 
these were all factors that would have been in his favor uh, of getting bail. But uh, the, you know, when the, the moment he didn't show up to the at the police, uh, all all of that was lost. Now that's uh, an interesting point. Uh, uh, and could you elaborate uh, mm-hmm. for me? And I'm sure mm-hmm. some of us in the audience. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was very deep. That they allowed oh, him to even come back. I mean, I I've, I know that if that was me or you or Bob. Uh, we would have never left. Really we would no, no, not even that. We would have never left the hotel in Chicago. In mm-hmm. fact, the police would have called up in exactly. Chicago and said, "Keep him there. It, We're on our way." Wasn't that? I thought yeah. that was really. Yeah, the OJ was treated. Um, uh, I think it's fair to say uh, differently uh, than uh, than you and I or any other typical and black what kind person. Of treatment would you call that? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was um, it was um, he was treated like he was uh, white. Yeah. I, I think that's the only yeah, way, yeah, to, yeah. way to say white, it. White boy treatment, right. you know. And 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 you know, OJ has this colorless uh, face anyway. I mean, no one views him as either black or, or white. He's just one of the you know the great American heroes. So they treated him uh, differently. They treated him uh, like they would treat uh, you know other people. Um, but uh, for a, for a black man uh, to be treated in that fashion was highly unusual. They would have arrested him as soon as he w- was in Chicago or as soon as he came back to uh, Los mm-hmm. Angeles. Okay, Doctor Gardner, let me ask you this before we go to do we talk about the prosecution situation as far as the defense is concerned in this O.J. Simpson case, was do you feel that this was some sort of a, of a ploy by uh, his attorney Robert Shapiro uh, to make it uh, appear as though O.J. is not in complete command of his faculties and the reports uh, this morning uh, of course you know he is under a uh, uh, heavy guard uh, he's being watched a suicide watch uh, they also say he's very depressed he's uh, in bad shape they say it's the worst he's seen they've seen him in in days, uh, do you think that that was the case, or is this man generally, uh, genuinely, genuinely sick? Well, if if the attorney is handling it that way, um, uh, I, I think he probably needs a new attorney. The fact that this man had everything to lose uh, by doing something like this is uh, insanity in itself that this could possibly happen. I mean, not only did he have uh, th- this ex-wife who he was reconciling with, but he also had uh, two children. Um, he had uh, he was making at least a million dollars a year. Uh, so he had so much to lose that for him to even be involved in this thing was absolute insanity. Uh, so if the, I don't think the attorney has to prove to us that there's something wrong with him. I think everyone thinks, whether they think he's guilty or not, that there's something going on with him. One other thing that I wanted to say is about this so-called suicide watch that they, uh, that they supposedly have on him. It, it only took a few minutes for O.J. to escape. Uh, well, maybe that's the wrong term. To, that's to the right leave. term. Okay. That's the right term. <laughs> well, because I'm sure the cops are sitting out there somewhere, but to leave right. uh, in that car with uh, with Cowens. And um, you, you'd think that people would learn a lesson by that. They thought he was suicidal then, and they didn't have someone eyeballing him 24 hours a day. Now they put him in this prison cell, and they're calling this thing a suicide watch. That's not a suicide watch that they have on him, Bob. What they have on him is a mental observation. A suicide watch is when you have someone eyeballing someone 24 hours hours a day just sitting there mm. and watching that person because it only takes a couple of seconds for for this for for OJ or any other person to just you know throw themselves against the wall or to stick an object down their throat or whatever the case may be there are many ways to take yourself take yourself out so this sheriff that's supposedly walking by every few minutes these guys you know so i'm gonna send a shout out to these guys out there in uh california you don't have this man on a suicide watch and someone's screwing up major time out there it's mm-hmm. not a suicide watch mm-hmm. so if he is suicidal he can just take himself out uh, in a few he, seconds a few that's seconds, all it yeah. takes well, Bob, I think if he was suicidal, that would have went down when he had the gun to his head. Right. I don't believe that's the case. I mean, that's just where I'm at. And again, I, I just think that we always also have to be cognizant of when we look at heroes, uh, quote unquote, uh, role models, quote unquote, sometimes we have a tendency to ascribe more to them than should be ascribed. I mean, these are human beings. And the reality is, you don't know OJ. I don't know him. And everybody out here doesn't know him. We don't know what is inside somebody and what they really do off camera. 
You understand? So, I mean, my thing is, that's, that's, that's another reality. But by the way, and he's an actor. Let's not forget that. He's an actor. On that suicide watch thing, uh, one of our producers in the back uh, just informed me that there are video cameras watching O.J. as well in that, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, in that cell. Mm -hmm. yeah, you were going to say, Mr. Pickett? No, no, what I was going to say, Bob, was that, you know, the real danger of television is that we, we oftentimes think that we know somebody when in fact we don't know somebody um i mean i mean oj um just felt like uh, your best friend but uh, he was a man who who grew up on the edge of life in san francisco and he was like one generation removed from uh, from the community and uh, came to the table with a, a lot of that that baggage and um, so we really didn't know O.J. I mean, we thought we knew him, but we really didn't know him. And we I really don't know what's going on now with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm going to have to uh, disagree with you, Brother M. Tume. I, I do believe that uh, he is suicidal. I think it, uh, if he committed this crime, I think we're looking at something uh, uh, akin to some sort of psychotic break, where this man just completely lost it. This was something that had been brewing over the years. There were so many charges that he had beaten his wife, and there was this domestic violence going on, and the brother finally snapped. And at this point, he appears to be, you could look into his face from what I see on TV, that the man is so irrational at this point that they just don't know what to expect from him so even though he may not have the intention of wanting to hurt himself you at this point the man is so unstable you just don't know what may happen well, you know that's an important point because insanity takes many different forms as you, as you know doc and the fact that he is pro is proclaiming his innocence doesn't necessarily uh, say that he was not insane at the time because oftentimes we tend to escape mm -hmm. we tend to lose our memory he may have committed the murders, but he may have forgotten completely what happened. So he truly believes, maybe, yeah, that he's innocent. Absolutely. And there's a term for that uh, called a fugue state where, uh, and this happens to people under extreme stress, they actually crack. They have uh, a nervous breakdown or a psychotic break, and they, get, they, they lead a completely different life for uh, weeks, months, whatever, and then they don't have any recollection when they come back to their normal state. So it's quite possible that he didn't remember what happened. Right. He knows something's wrong, right. but in his mind, he really believes That's that right. he did nothing. Which, 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 which uh, makes you wonder and, and you have to want to want to reconcile this he you know goes to the funeral acts very normal but again it, it's not normal you well, understand? It's, well actually what you guys are doing i must say this now he's not going to say it this was bob's uh position Okay. Earlier when we spoke, I, that's why I'm interesting listening to you guys. Oh, okay. Y'all, so y'all eating at the same lunch counter. Okay. I'm at another street. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's interesting. But you know, it's interesting. If a trial comes down on this case, it, it's going to take probably a year, year and a half. Before why? Why is that? That's always interesting to me. Why? You know, I mean, uh, why would it take a year? Well, I mean, th there's a whole host of reasons, uh, and 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 the doc knows some of them. Um, the defense team will have to assemble. Uh, psycholo psychological experts, maybe one or two of those, to come in and examine the OJ and give their opinion. The uh, prosecutor team will have their their experts. If you watch the Menendez trial, it was a battle. Hmm. It was really a truly a battle of experts. And, and as you indicated, to him, uh, the parents were on trial. <laughs> they are literally going to put. This lady, uh, Mrs. Simpson, I call the Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. They're going to put her on trial, and uh, so you're going to have a. So what will they do when they put on? What what what, what is the defense going to do with her image, the character assassination? What will they try to come up? Well, with? they're going to try to the, the character assassination. <laughs> yeah, they're going to try to show that, that that she precipitated his his insanity. I mean that you know here was a guy, America's nice guy. Uh, America's hero. He was a long-suffering uh, person. In fact, um, you recall in one part of his suicide note, he says, and I'm quoting now, at times I have felt like a battered husband or boyfriend, but I loved her. Make that clear to everyone, and I would take whatever it took to make it work. Mm -hmm. Sounded like there's something a little deeper there, and it sounded like, quite frankly, sure. yeah, it sounds orchestrated. To but me. it's gonna it's, it's gonna take a year and a half. So so you got a psychological expert, you have a forensic expert, you're gonna have a pathologist, and I understand that they they've they've contracted or retained Michael Bodden, 
who used to be the uh, medical examiner for New York City as their oh. expert witness on a forensic pathologist basis. I understand and even Bruce Cutler is going to be involved uh, in this case. Oh, I, I didn't hear that yeah. at all. Bruce I didn't Cutler hear that. is being flown in. Uh, for the defense team. Now, can I ask you guys That's a question? Heavy now, Bruce Cutler, for, no, this is, for, yeah. for all of your John listeners, Gotti. is the <laughs> attorney uh, for John Gotti. And let me ask you all this. Bob, and I don't know if you feel this. You know, my question is, if this were reverse, in what sense? In terms of a woman. I mean, we. I, I think also in terms of the society, it's a lot easier for a man to justify killing a woman than it is for a woman to kill a man. And I think if it was reversed, it would be a harder time for a woman to be able to pull this off. I just think this... this, this well, 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 understand to him, this is going to be a hard time for O.J. Oh, I, I know. I mean, based it's a hard on, case, Just baby. based on the evidence. And, and the evidence thus far is truly circumstantial. Uh, by that I mean there's no, I, no eyewitness testimony. There's no one who actually saw O.J. doing this. But from the circumstantial evidence that has thus far been obtained, it's going to be a tough case for O.J. Murder under any circumstance is not an excuse uh, no matter if you're American's hero but I must caution everybody that you know OJ is innocent until proven guilty you know we need not rush to uh, immediate judgments about it we're gonna have to listen carefully to the evidence and uh, then, and then make a decision about it but given OJ's celebrity status this is gonna be a hard-fought trial uh, quite frankly, any attorney worth his salt, uh, and Howard Weisman included, um, would, would want this case. But it's going to require a lot of money. It's going to require a lot of experts. And the kind of things that O.J., by, by virtue of his special status, can do. Normally, I mean, if this were a, a normal brother uh, or sister, he, he or she could not afford what it's going to take to properly fight this case. But I, I think one of the things you're going to see, though, you're going to see a major backlash against OJ by the women's groups because everyone is saying, and, and rightfully so, the women are saying, hey, who is the real victim here? The fact was that there were two people who were killed. One of them was OJ's ex-wife. Right. And everyone's concerned about OJ and no one's concerned about his ex-wife. That's right. And the women's groups, especially when we talk about domestic violence, the fact that uh, he had beaten her several times before and had gotten off with community service or what have you. One, one uh, uh, a Times article said that, in fact, he dictated to the judge what he was going to do as far as community <laughs> service. So with that kind yeah. of Backlash coming through. We are going to see a war between the sexes in in well, this particular I, I, case. I'm in total agreement in terms of, uh, of the backlash. But unfortunately, uh, I think that his celebrity status and his image and impact and implication will outweigh that. I think that 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 war will not be seen on equal grounds. I think there will be a great backlash. But I think because of the power of his posture, that'll be secondary to how people look. I just saw before I came over they had on the news. They're starting a vigil outside his house. I saw young girls crying. So, I mean, the, you understand, the, the, the split is too deep. The psychological impact that this man is having, or anyone like himself, I mean, it, it had to been a Michael Jordan, the same kind of thing. Which leads me to the question I wanted to ask you, Doctor. In terms of black children, it being a, 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 a black, quote-unquote, uh, uh, hero, I, that word is corny to me, but for the convenience of conversation, we'll use it. What is the psychological impact that that has for young black children, in particular young black males? I really don't know if if the impact is going to be that deep. I, I believe that there are uh, uh, some young black males uh, who idolize OJ or know from OJ about the television commercials. But these kids are so young now. These kids have never seen him play. Uh, he is more considered more of a mainstream hero than perhaps a, a video hero or someone like Michael Jordan um, or Charles Barkley. So I don't think it's going to affect them that much. What I think will be the, the, the major issue, though, is when they look at someone like this who's black, who's made it from poverty, who's become this big star and if he did uh, commit this crime has self-destructed right. then what they'll be asking themselves is well what the hell am I supposed to do even if you get money you end up screwing up so is it worth even getting into the race all right that music means it's break time gentlemen we're gonna go to the phones right after the break 
You're listening to the Open Line on 98.7 KISS FM. The subject this morning, the O.J. Simpson case. And we'll take a break and be back right after this. How about a riddle? A riddle? I love riddles. Go ahead. What's high speed, high gloss, high on safety, and highly green? High speed, high gloss, high on safety, mm -hmm. highly green. A power plant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. Well, actually, you're not too far off. Really? It's a Plymouth Neon mm. from your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Okay. Like the one that's parked right over there. Over there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I like. 132 horses, eight coats of chip-resistant paint, and dual airbags. Wow, but wait a minute. That one's cherry red. I mm -hmm. thought you said it was green. Well, it is. The air conditioning uses a CS free refrigerant, and a lot of the parts are coated for recyclability. You know green. Right, but see, I like red. So Can we move on, please? Yes, we can. Yeah, now what's it cost? Only eighty nine seventy five for starters. Of course, that's a sticker price available for order. New York residents add one seventy five for rear defroster. Tax and $500 destination fee extra. I know, but where can I get a test drive? At your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And remember, airbags are fully effective only when used with a seatbelt. Oh, I love it when you speak legalese. I know you do. Same member FD. I see. You know, when those folks from Continental wanted to buy all my peanuts to help them advertise those peanuts fairs, I was a mite skeptical. But as my daddy told me, never look a gift horse in the mouth. Georgia peanut farmer Billy Sinkbill for Continental Airlines. Well, I'm glad to say it seems those airline boys know as much about the flying business as I do peanut farming. People like their low, unrestricted peanuts fares so much, they're adding more and more flights every day. Continental Peanuts fares are available to more cities than ever before, like Indianapolis for $159, Chicago Midway for $149, and Baltimore for $79. No restrictions, all fully refundable. Flying for peanuts. Who would have thought it? Then again, who would have thought I'd be selling enough peanuts to be putting in a swimming pool? Fly for Peanuts, only on Continental. Call 1-800-523-FARE. Hi, we can't come to the phone now. Please leave a message. Yo, Leon, it's me, Curtis. I'm still here, still in this garage, still waiting for the money. I can't believe you didn't go to Western Union. I might never see that cash. You were right. It was dumb to borrow Mom and Pop's car while they were on vacation. But I couldn't miss Joelle's party. So she lives 300 miles away. Did I know the car would break down? Did I know the guys at this garage wouldn't touch it without the cash? And you didn't go to Western Union? How could you trust anyone else? You know Western Union's reliable, and they're the fastest. And I need fast. The only thing worse than missing that party would be if Mom and Pops found out I took their car. Okay, I should have listened to you. Just because you're older and still live at home doesn't mean you're stupid. Honest. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Send your money with the people you know. Available at AMP Metro and New Jersey Supermarkets. You're listening to Open Line on 98.7 KISS FM. To reach Open Line, call 955-9870 or toll free 1-800-288-KISS. And welcome back. I'm Bob Slade along with James M. Toomey, our guest, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier and attorney Bob Pickett. Uh, we're talking about the O.J. Simpson case. And uh, I want to play something for you, gentlemen, just before we get ready to go to the phone, because I thought this was rather amusing throughout the whole night. Uh, I've always complained about anchor men. They'd be totally lost without their prompter, and many of them are just plain stupid. <laughs> right, and this anchor was an anchor man who was, in, who was on, at the station out in Los Angeles with um, with uh, Jim Hill. I think it was Jim Hill, the the, the, the sportscaster, oh, and he sure. was talking to the, the, the anchor man. So Jim Hill was making this dramatic plea: "Oh, please, OJ, turn the car around, and put on the blinkers, you and AC, please stop, stop." The anchor man gets on, and he's going to add his five cents worth. Now, if they were actually in the car listening to this on the radio. Well, they would have heard this guy. Jim, um, uh, in his letter that we heard uh, read today, the letter that he addressed to, to everybody, of course, there were two other private letters, but the one was read to everybody else. In that, he insisted he was not guilty. He insisted in his innocence that he was devastated by the loss of his ex-wife, that they, in fact, were close, that he, he, he had nothing but, but good, loving thoughts and feelings about her. Uh, if, in fact, what he is saying is true, 
then I know your advice to him is come back and show us, come back and prove it, come back and, and prove uh, your innocence in a case like this. I know in the court system you're innocent and proven guilty, but in, in, in the mind of a lot of the public, it is going to require some convincing uh, in, the, in the public's mind. Absolutely. Now, this is the anger man. <laughs> now, the guy, I'm saying to myself, you know, if I'm listening to this and I'm suicidal and I hear this dummy get on it and talk, I'm going to blow my brains out. I'm dead. Yeah. I'm dead. You know, I'm hearing this guy going, yeah, please, yeah, you're going to, it's going to be taken. It's going to take some uh, convincing. OJ, but please turn yourself in. Yeah, at least. I'm guilty to prove it in this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Psychologically, yeah. doctor, what, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? Well, that's that. That's something. I mean, he's he's already telling the the cards are stacked against you, and uh, come on back and face the music, and uh, maybe you might be able to get away with this. Ah, that, that's dumb, Anchorman. Yeah. Tell you, without the prompter, many of these guys <laughs> are lost. Okay, let's go to your phone calls now. Nine five five nine eight seven zero. We have on line eight, Joseph from Queens. Good morning. Joseph. Good morning. You're on the open line. Okay. Has anyone looked at our uh, aspect when the two bodies were found? Were they? Did they still have their valuables? Did they still have their money and, and, and jewelry and everything? Because that would negate the fact that it was a robbery. Yes, they, they, they had their value. There was no rob no uh, evidence of any robbery. In okay. fact, they clearly said that. Okay, secondly, um, this is a prime example of a, a black man that has lost, that definitely had some problems as far as I was concerned. No one was there to give him any support. He had no, that, that for example, if anyone, you, you just, this, the M2 may have tried to get to the point of the spiritual support. No one ever said that he attended a church. No one said during the uh, whole episode, the contact is pastor, the contact is minister. Whenever these guys make, you know, make the money and they get to the top, they seem to lose touch with the community, with that spiritual support. And this is what I feel brings them down. Mm. I think that's a very, very interesting point, brother. And, uh, I mean, look at Michael Jackson. As soon as he makes it to the top, he forgets about the support that made him where he was. He gets all, most of the people surrounding him are white people. You know, um, Mike Tyson, similar situation. Mm -hmm. They lose that spiritual support because even when they were nego negotiating with him, not one reporter or no one said, you know, can we contact his pastor, that minister there to talk to him. I mean, mm -hmm. with us in the black community, that's the first thing you, you look to. Or the second thing after your family is that minister support. And yeah, and, and, and yeah, exactly, brother. And minister, minister uh, slash cultural community. And uh, I think that uh, that's a very, very interesting, poignant uh, message that should be uh, clear to people. I mean, most black athletes and entertainers, once they meet, uh, reach a certain status, no longer have that, uh, what I call, cultural continuity with the community, and they become another thing. And I think that was one of the most and graphic... You, cause I don't hmm? the phone, so, um, another point you have to touch on. At first, prior to the, um, the car ride through the highway, I think the public would have gone against OJ. Okay, because you mm -hmm. heard public speaking, you heard people say, I mean, they were looking upon it as a black man attacking, at least I would say, someone who's black. These are two, and you saw his parents, Goldman's parents. The sympathy was going that way. You had his family crying, a poor, you know, young white boy that was working as a waiter. He's slain this innocent, um, you know, um, good American wife and this black man. You know, I mean, the public was going that way. But with this incident that's happened now, I mean, it, it, it's remarkable to see how the public has swayed. <laughs> back <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sticking by my point brother and i think if that if it was that then the orchestration couldn't have been done better if it was done in a hollywood movie that's what i really believe that it was done to do just that because prior to that you're absolutely right the public opinion and posture was against it now it's like everybody save the juice you've never seen anything like this this man's on a on a on a chase down the highway. You're talking about people pulling along the side, cheering him. Mm -hmm. When you mention the, the women's groups, before I go, uh, I think you should clar clarify and make sure you say white women's groups. Mm -hmm. Because if you go into any black beauty parlor in the black community, the black women all across America are saying, excuse me, are saying, he's got what he's deserved for for crossing the fence. Mm -hmm. All right, brother, I want to thank you very much for your call, okay? Got to go to someone else now. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to line five where we have Layla from Far Rockaway. Good morning, you're on the open line. Hi, how you doing? Okay, good morning. Good. good morning. Um, I wanted to say that, um, you know, I don't want to believe that it's true, but I believe it's a possibility because in domestic violence, it happens a lot, and um, the fact that he probably couldn't get over that she left him, and then it's, it's kind of funny that it's, a white man, you know what I'm saying, and um, I'm just—it's it's very sad, you know. And it, it makes it bad because a lot of the black children that look up to him, you know, now what are they going to think, you know? And and it's, it's just very sad. And I just hope that 
there's hope for him because now that he didn't kill himself, they're going to do it anyway, you know. And if he is guilty, like they say he is, he's really in big trouble. Well, when when we look at um, the previous caller, uh, Joseph was talking about uh, he was out of touch with uh, with the community, he was out of touch uh, spiritually, and so on. I, I think that's just part of the issue. The other issue is the fact that OJ is a celebrity, and. Uh, you guys basically know what that's all about. When you have a celebrity, no one is going to tell the celebrity, hey, listen, man, I think you're screwing up. You know, everyone is a yes man to these celebrities. Whatever that celebrity wants, everyone will do it. No one really has the cojones to stand up and say, hey, listen, I really think you're screwing up. I think you should get psychological help. With this domestic violence, for example, we know um, there, there are thousands, millions of accounts of people, uh, women who take orders of protection out against their husbands due to domestic violence, and the men end up shooting or, or, or killing them in some way anyway and a lot of these guys and, the, and including the wives should be getting some sort of psychological counseling they don't really get it and in this case we know that OJ was not getting the help that he needed because he was a celebrity all right let's go to the phones again uh, line one we have Carol from New Jersey good morning yes good morning first thing I like to say is my sympathy goes out to Nicole and her family and the later family and the mother of OJ and her and her family, and it saddens me that thousands of children who have posters of athletes in their homes and and their heroes, I've listened and I've also heard that a lot of people, even on my job, they always say, you know, is he stupid to leave so much evidence? I like to say that there are habitual murderers in prison on death row who have um who are there because they found some kind of evidence which linked them to a crime and i don't consider that this crime was planned it was spontaneous so and i think it was done through a rage and i think, in, you, got, I think you got a call I'll, I'll just ignore it <laughs> and through a uh, absence of of he was in a different state of mind or the person was in a different state of mind and i think when reality hits in of what what happened you only get get rid of the obvious evidence you don't think about well maybe i've cut my hand i mean many times uh, you know you're cooking and you can slice your hand you don't even know until after the fact and i think the public needs to stop viewing celebrities as super beings because if the average person commits a crime they do the time Therefore, what goes for one go should go for all. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I thank you very much for your call, Carol. Thank really you. appreciate it. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Now, let's go to line six. We have Deborah from Brooklyn. Good morning. You're on the open line. Thanks for holding on. Good morning. Uh, I have a comment. Um, I'm very upset because I, I agreed with Michael Cotman earlier when he said that he feels that OJ has been convicted, tried and convicted in the media already. Okay. I don't think that he's going to get a fair trial. He's a human being. Okay, regardless of his celebrity status, this should not have happened. Okay, give the man a chance to be tried and convicted in a, a, a court of law. Okay, do not convict him on the media. I don't like the things that have been said, you know, and people should not put celebrities on a pedestal and think that they are beyond um, doing anything other than what we would normally do. Okay, you can't say that this man shouldn't be upset at this time. You know, he just lost his ex-wife. You know, he has to think of his two young children. There's no way that you can think that he can now walk around with, without feeling some kind of uh, remorse or anything in his heart. You can't think that you won't see, you know, him being upset. You know, it's, it, it would be inhuman of him to not feel that way. You know, yeah. and and I just you know I just feel that that you know it's wrong, and I and I'm I'm very upset about it. All right, well, very thank, upset. All right, thank you very much for your call and your comments. All right, appreciate it. All right, let's go to a line four. We have Patty from Manhattan. Good morning, You're on the open line. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Um, I just have to say that um, just like one of your guests said that OJ is innocent until proven guilty, but I feel that M. Toomey has tried him already, and I would hate to see him on the jury. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, we're very, excuse me, to me. Uh, we're very familiar with the with the court system in the United States, and we know that usually a white woman is dead, a black man is hunted. But OJ just made it easy for them. He married one. 
So they don't have to hunt. I mean, it's not a general, I mean, even though it's a general thing for them to suspect the, um, the spouse first, they're not giving him a break. They haven't looked anywhere else. And although I agree with the lady that called before that said that um, even habitual murderers leave evidence behind, I feel that the, the Jewish, the American uh, police system is, is, is so um, familiar with, with planting evidence that you, can't, you cannot even overlook that. It can be planted. Things can happen. And, I mean, I heard someone saying that she owed a lot of money. She was into drugs and stuff. That can, you know, that should also be considered. We should stop trying people. And M2 Me needs to be a little bit more compassionate and a little bit more understanding. Okay, thank That's you very much. That's my comment. All right, thank you now. Got to be more compassionate, brother. Do I respond? No. 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 Okay, you're not gonna respond. <laughs> I think compassion is something I have a great deal of. Uh, maybe you have a problem with my opinion, and that's only my opinion. And believe me, I would not dare ever anyone uh, uh, suggest that someone is anything other than what I think. Now, the thing is, if you disagree with me, that's one thing. But let's not put that in the context of compassion or the absence of it. There you go, brother. All right, line 10, we have Hope from Long Island. Hello, Hope. Hope. Hi, how are you? I would just like to comment on the article in Newsday that angered me yesterday. I mean, here they are talking about the OJ situation, but they also bring up Mike Tyson, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Magic Johnson's aid situation. I mean, I didn't think that was necessary at all. And they were all black, right? Right. <laughs> there it is. I mean, it just angers me for... I mean, why should they even compare those situations with this one? Well, uh, there is such a lack of... Uh, black heroes uh, and blacks in our country as compared to whites as far as the numbers who are wealthy and who are doing very well those few who happen to make it are very much in the public eye and are put on a pedestal and in some ways in, a, in a, some sort of unconscious racism these are the ones uh, who are knocked down they're the first ones knocked down as, as the old saying goes uh, last hired uh, what is it the last hired first fired right and it also has to do uh briefly uh in total agreement with the doctor has to do with what we use as a criteria for our measurement for role models unfortunately for black people role models are based on money and social profile because see in our community kids don't know doctor so-and-so they don't know the lawyer or judge so-and-so or the nuclear physicist who, physicist who lives around the corner our kids are, are reared on Athletes and entertainers being heroes, and that's the first and the foremost mistake that we make. They're not heroes. They're human beings who entertain. Right. Right. We need, see, the first thing about a role model, it must be someone accessible. There's nothing accessible about a kid worshiping somebody who makes four or five million dollars a year right. and is on television. That's the first absurdity. You never hear white people talking about Larry Bird as a role model or Guns N' Roses as a role model. They are entertainers and basketball players. We have shifted that, right. and we have to stop that. That's not a role model. That should not be the criteria. The real heroes in our community are the people who go to work every day and who take care of their families. Those are the real heroes. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for the call, Matt. All right, let's go to line uh, three. We have Diana from the Bronx. Good morning. You're on the open line. Good morning. Okay, yeah. First of all, I agree with everything and Toomey usually says, except for the Haitians and this. <laughs> okay. Uh, but because... I really do believe that. But how do we know that someone wasn't after that guy or the, or the wife? No, we don't. And that they set him up. We don't. Uh, it, the way you made it sound to me sounds like you thought that he did it. Mostly everybody that called sounds like they think he did it. Give the man a chance. Maybe he did do it, but I'm voting for maybe he didn't. I don't even like the way he treated his first wife. And by the way, he has four children, everybody. That's right. Everybody's been talking about his mm -hmm. two children. Sure. He has four. And these are like adults, and they have to go through life with the, the larger kids that's going to be making fun of them and everything else. Remember them as well. Right. You're right. Thank you for that. Thank you for the call, ma'am. All right, we're coming up on the break. Let me go. I'm going to throw this out. Think about this, gentlemen. Why, you two ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to throw this out as a scenario and just ponder on this for a second. All right. O.J. Simpson says he's innocent. All right. Take it for granted that he is innocent. If he is indeed innocent, then one would have to say, well, all right, uh... Who had access to his car? Uh, who had to act? Now, we're talking about the evidence that we have know about so far. Uh, somebody had to have access to his car, to his house, to leave evidence for authority. So if O.J. says he's innocent, could there be a possibility that he is covering for someone else? 
In other words, he no. Hey, well, just let just throw it up. He may be could he be covering for someone else, someone he knows, a friend, a family member, maybe someone very close to him who could have committed this crime, and uh, he may be covering for that individual. Just a just a theory. Just I believe in conspiracy theories, just like everybody else. <laughs> so, hey, could this be a possibility? Possible, yes, sir. It's yeah, possible. I mean, because they found uh, bloody laundry water in the uh, washing machine. I understand there was bloody water in the washing machine in his house. So someone had to have access to his house in order to do this. Could he be covering for us at the end of the program? Give you an opportunity to sound. I think they started to vent already, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Turn on your TV on an average Sunday night. Action over Korea until May 1951. Do people really get excited over this stuff? These old wall choice look bad, Loretta. Well, probably installed. Or is Sunday night TV just a plot to make you pass out early? Drizzle activity over Wichita, which reminds... Wake up. Because VH1 and the stars are going to do your Sunday right. Live from Shrine Auditorium in L.A., it's VH1 Honors, an all-star concert tribute with Bonnie Raitt, Michael Bolton, Garth Brooks, Kenny G, Al Green, Melissa Etheridge, Stevie Wonder, and the artist formerly known as Prince. Be watching Sunday, June 26th as eight music superstars who've made the world a better place rock your night with unforgettable live performances. See you for the pilot tour. Uh-oh. Termites? Don't miss VH1 Honors, Sunday, June 26th at 8 p.m., hosted by Ellen DeGeneres. If Sunday night can look and sound this good, maybe there's hope after all. If you'd like to drive a brand new Nissan or a Subaru or quality used car, but you're worried about price, there's never been a better time to get down to Lynn's Nissan Subaru in Bloomfield. Get the personal touch from sales manager Bob Wilkins, the man who specializes in helping people just like you own cars they never thought they could afford. And right now, Bob has even more power to give you a low, low price on a brand new Nissan or Subaru during Lynn's 94 winter clearance. After 15 snowstorms, the 94 models are piled up, which means Bob must clear out every 94 model in stock at the lowest prices of the year. You can buy a brand new Nissan or Subaru for as little is $79.95. That's right, just $79.95 for a new Nissan or Subaru. Or you can browse through hundreds of quality used cars, starting as low as $19.95. You'll like working with someone who's dedicated to serving the black community. Get to know Bob Wilkins today at Lynn's Nissan Subaru, located at 318 Bloomfield Avenue in Bloomfield. Call Bob at 201-743-2111. That's 743-2111. You're listening to Open Line on 98.7 KISS FM. To reach Open Line, call 955-9870 or toll free 1-800-288-KISS. All right, welcome back to the Open Line. I'm Bob Slade, along with James M. Toomey. And our guests are this morning, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier and Attorney Bob Pickett. And we're talking about the O.J. Simpson case. Toomes, you wanted to do a quick question. Yeah, I had a quick question for uh, Brother Pickett. Uh, in terms of this case, uh, should the prosecution be seeking a, a, a death penalty? Well, the, the terms, uh, it's clear that um, in, the, um, in the initial charge and complaint here, they've charged them with first-degree murder with special circumstances, two counts. Mm. And that carries with it uh, the potential for a death um, a sentence. Um, and, and it's absurd because... I mean, the prosecutor is going to have to make a decision within the next 30 days or so whether to seek that, and he shouldn't because on whatever O.J. did, he does not deserve to be put to death. Um, he deserves to uh, be treated for his illness. Um, and, you know, he, he's, he's a sick person because this is obviously a crime of great illness. All right, Don, let's go back to your phone calls at 955-9870. See, i got a long list here. We're going to go to line eight. We have uh, Steve from the Bronx. Good morning. You know, when you're, on the, you're on the open line. Thanks for holding on. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend Bob Slade, because in, all the, in the white media and the black media, including the other guests on the show in, in the last hour, he's the only one who hasn't said anything stupid yet. And... Uh, I like to. I'd also like to make the point. I thought it was interesting that OJ had orange juice at the house after uh, after the police uh, went back there. I think even if they have a videotape of him murdering his wife and the other guy, that he could still be a more popular spokesman than Rush Limbaugh for Florida orange juice. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, thank you very anyway, much for your call. No, that's, that's okay. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you very kindly. 
Whoa. Ooh, about okay. stupid. Right. Okay. All right. Let's <laughs> go to zone. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to uh, Live 5 where we have Rose from Brooklyn. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, my comment is very simple. I mean, what kind of message does this give our black and Hispanic kids? If there's no money, you're guilty and you're going down the river to some jail. I mean, it's sad to say that black and Hispanic kids are going to get the rap for this one. Guilty or not, money should not always come into uh, a case as big as this one. Because he's got the money to come out free and clear, just like the Menendez brothers. That's, oh, but that is true. Money, money unfortunately, in America uh, buys you uh, talented lawyers, talented defense team, and experts. Um, and, we, and, we, and without it, you're left to uh, your own devices. Yeah, but what happens to the kids that don't have the money and are innocent? There are a whole bunch of kids in jail. Every right jail now. in America oh, right has now. that. You know, it's sad to say that this is happening like this and people are glorifying this. I mean, he is human first and famous second. People need to acknowledge this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your call. All right. All right, bye-bye. Let's go to Derek on line one from New Jersey. Good morning. You're on the open line. God Good bless morning, you, brother. Bob. I think he sneezed or something like that, right? I just <laughs> wanted to speak about um, Charles Barkley when he said that we shouldn't make uh, superstars role models. He was, he was right in saying that. Because uh, we don't know these people. We see them on TV and that's it. Right. Role models should be people that you see every day. People that you know. And so if they're doing drugs, if they're beating their wives, you know this. And you, and you can tell your kids, hey, you don't want to be like this person. So we, we, we're putting, making role models in, in, in the wrong places all, the, all together. And uh, also I, I wanted to say that <clears throat> the juice, we, everybody is sympathizing with the juice. But nobody's thinking about these two dead people and their families and all these and and and, and the kids. Mm -hmm. Everyone has all the sympathy for the juice. Yeah, I feel sorry for the juice, but I, I feel even sorrier for those kids and for this dead woman and this dead man. Right. You know, they, they have no more feelings. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, thank you very much for your call, brother. Okay. All right, bye bye. Let's go to line six. We have uh, Brian from Brooklyn. Good morning on the open line, Brian. Yeah. Hi. Good Hi. morning, Bob. Good morning. Um. What I think about this whole OJ situation is this. LAPD is on a rampage since Rodney King. And I think this is real sloppy work. Even for a man with all the um, emotional problems that OJ has. And I don't think it's fair for anybody so far, even the LAPD, to look for information just to connect a man with a murder instead of like looking for something to like Show, show his innocence. I think that is unfair. So therefore, I think people should really look at the LAPD actions in this whole matter surrounding this guy. Well, well, thank you very much, I, I think it's pretty obvious that the uh, LAPD has been doing some sloppy work. I mean, the way that this whole thing came down, where he got into the car with Cowens and left, we all know that uh, that the police have been monitoring the house for several days. The fact that he let uh, that uh, they let it get to the point of where where it got to uh, that's that's quite obvious. But again, you know, people talk about whether he had gotten preferential treatment, and it's quite obvious that he has gotten preferential treatment. Could that have been avoided? Possibly. All right, let's go back to the phones again. Good morning. Uh, we're on line uh, four. We have Janice. Uh, good morning. You're on the open line. Hello. Yes, hi. I would like to know what made the networks air this chase on television. What if the man actually shot himself? Ratings. Ratings, yeah. baby. Well, that, that was, <laughs> in fact, show. the point. They wanted to see if, in fact, they were going to have a live feed of him killing himself. Exactly. And that, that must have been in the minds of many of the producers. It, it, wouldn't it be great if he sure. shot himself uh, I mean, right here on national television? That'll, that'll what make would have happened to the audience? Look at all the audience. Don't you think that they would have had to have psychiatric help after that? No. The obvious part <laughs> is we were all watching, weren't we? We were. <laughs> okay. I was watching because so, I was watching the game. They, yeah, yeah, right. That's the we were forced. You were forced. You, you could not have had a situation where you didn't watch. The, that's the fact of the matter is, just like uh, the, the two brothers said, I mean, this is the kind of society we're in. We were all watching, and I think there's a spot in all of us. No different than when you drive by uh, an auto accident. You always notice how the traffic slows down. Right. What are we really looking at? Yeah. Oh, and something inside of us wants to see somebody crushed. Not really, but you kind of do, or stand and watch a fire. So that's no different. It was the biggest fire we could all watch at the same time. And uh, from a psychological point of view, I think the doctor should comment on that. But I know that's how we are. But I do believe if it was a white athlete or a white star, they would not have shown that like that. 
Well, I don't, I don't quite agree. I no, think, uh, I think the, the way that this has taken such theater that, in fact, they, they, they would have been watching. Mm -hmm. And they, they would have put it on. OJ is to the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah OJ yeah, was is beyond a color. To the world. Yeah, he was yeah, beyond let's, color. let's be clear yeah. about he that. He was colorless. Right. Right. right, exactly. Thank you for your call, ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank so you. All right, let's go to line 10. We have Lewis uh, from Harlem. Uh, good morning, Lewis. You're on the air, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, first of all, I have a few quick comments that I want to make. Make them quick, bro. Okay, first of all, the gentleman was talking about how white uh, white people don't look up to a white role model such as Larry Bird and other superstars. Being a black person, we don't do what white people do. We look up to OJ because of what the past that he's been through. He was a young black male, poor male, out of the projects, and he rose to be this great big superstar. Okay, second of all, I want to talk about O.J. was guilty from the start. Even in question, they put this man in handcuffs. He wasn't supposed to be put in handcuffs. Careful, in my brother. Why are you? Why are you assuming he's guilty? I'm not saying he's guilty. Oh. They made him guilty from the start. Okay. The press, the media. Okay. And then they had his ex-wife psychiatrist on the f on TV talking about how he threatened to kill and all. That's not need. That doesn't need to be brought out now. That needs to be brought out in the trial. Yeah, there were there were some issues, and I think this was brought up on the show earlier. Some real issues of confidentiality as to whether this uh, mental health professional, so-called professional, should be releasing that kind of information, unless, and Bob, you'll tell me, unless uh, they were under some sort of subpoena or something. Exactly. Was, I see this is a clear. big uh, mm -hmm. media feed and frenzy because in the paper today's Newsday, they even put that they think that OJ was a threat to his kids when he was on the lam. What kind of threat could he be to his kids? Yeah, well, the um, media has has clearly uh, piped this up and played this up. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, for your call. Let's go to uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to line eight. We have uh, Andrew uh, on the line. Good morning. You're on the open line, brother. Yes. Good morning. I'm calling. Um, everybody's complaining about what they're reading. They need to stop reading it. They complain about the Newsday, the Times. Why are you reading it if it's affecting you? It's a subconscious thing that they put before you, and once it gets into your system, you have already been thought, planned to think that way. So off right off the back, they had them guilty. They tried them right on television. And instead of saying, well, there's a murder, let's, try, let's see who can be guilty and who can be innocent. You know, let's go through the process and find who did this crime. No, they, OJ, and you have all these other people, they are um, um, unidentified police sources. Well, the police were leaking all that information out. It was the police doing that for whatever reason. Yeah, but and uh, that was deliberate. Yes, it is. They knew exactly and what they were doing. And you have to understand that it's and, and naturally, also, brother, very quickly before we're going to take a break, but and I'm sure Bob, that you'll be able to comment on this. That normally, in a case like this, where you have a, a spouse uh, killed, the no, normal assumption is that the, the surviving spouse did it. You oh, know, that, or that is automatic, did. Bob. That's yeah. that's an automatic assumption. They look to the surviving spouse, and um, and so they make every effort to focus right. on him. Exactly. Yeah. Or so, her. So O.J. O.J. Simpson was a logical, uh, logical person to look at. Yeah. We're coming up on a break very quickly. Something else, some other information. Uh, we understand that uh, in his uh, fights with uh, uh, Nicole in the past and even with the... Um, his uh, wife, Marguerite, before that, uh, when he used to get into these battles, uh, the next day he would be very apologetic. He'd be apologizing up and down. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to die. I lost my mind. I didn't remember what I was doing. Blah, 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 blah. He has a history of, of doing that. Could this be sort of that same kind of reaction? Only oh, oh, absolutely. And we see that with people who, who are involved in spousal abuse. They just lose it. Poor impulse control. And then the next day or a few hours later, they apologize up and down. That's, that's just a pattern. Okay. What we're going to do now is clear the lines and give you an opportunity to vent. It means you have 30 seconds to uh, vent on just about anything you want to. You can vent on the OJ thing, vent on something else. Give us a call, 955-9870. That's the vent line, folks. 955-9870. You listen to the open line at 98.7 KISS FM. We're talking about OJ Simpson case. I want to thank our guests, Dr. Gardier and attorney Bob Pickett. Tunes and I will be back right after this. Stay with us. May I help you, sir? Yes, I'd like to register here. Sir, uh, this is Casual Male Big and Tall. Uh, I know. You're the number one store for big and tall men. That's why I want to register here. But uh, you're not a bride-to-be. I know that. I want to register for Father's Day. Come again? See, I want my family to know exactly where to go for my Father's Day gift. You've got all your silk shirts, both prints and solids, for just nineteen ninety nine, And short sleeve dress shirts and ties on sale at 25% off. Don't forget pure sweat activewear for only fourteen ninety nine. I know. And all Levi 540 
jeans on sale, too. Or our huge selection of shorts and printed T-shirts, also at nineteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, and tell your family the Father's Day sale is going on now through Father's Day. Say, uh, while I'm here, do you think I could look at some patterns? China? No, those nineteen ninety nine silk shirts. Casual mail, big and tall, we make big, 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 big. With more than 20 locations in the New York metropolitan area, dial 1-800-THINK-BIG for the store nearest you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Perdue. It used to be simple. Way back when, you'd just order a cola. But today, you have to pick between original, diet, caffeine-free, or even cola that's clear. And I'm not making it any easier on you. Because at your next cookout, you'll not only have to choose between a medium or well-done burger, but also whether you want one made from beef or one made from Purdue Fresh Ground Chicken. Bet you can guess which one I'd prefer, and it wouldn't be beef. You see, my burgers are 100% Purdue Chicken. No artificial ingredients or preservatives. Fresh, never frozen. And best yet, Purdue Ground Chicken has one half the fat of regular ground beef. When a burger tastes this good, the only real decision you have to make is whether you want ketchup, Mustard, mayo, relish. Look for Purdue Mustard, fresh mayo, ground chicken mayo, in your grocer's meat case. All Walbaums have fresh Purdue ground chicken and ground chicken burgers on sale. Why not stop in and buy some? Okay, is everybody ready? Ready, Bob. I'm going to start showing the slides of our vacation out west. Oh, here's the first one I took of my Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. It's a great shot, isn't it? Well, yeah, but uh, what's that big hole behind it? That, um, uh, I don't know, Grand Canyon or something like that. Anyway, here's another shot of my Grand Cherokee on the second day of our trip. Uh -huh. Now, just look at how the morning sun starts to reflect uh, off that me, puppy. Bob, yeah. what, what are those hills way in the background? Uh, they're kind of hard to make out. Those? Uh, somebody mentioned they were the Rocky something or other. Mountains. Oh, oh. I remember this one. Uh, this is my Jeep Grand Bob, Cherokee. Yeah. You're starting to scare me. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo, with its available four-wheel anti-lock brakes, full-time four-wheel drive, and 220-horsepower engine, it's the picture of the perfect 4x4. Four four. So, Ted, you're telling me that those four guys are carved into the mountain. Uh, that's right. I is that one Elvis? Ooh, unbelievable. There's only one Jeep, a registered trademark of Chrysler Corporation. Remember, there's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle Deal. You're listening to Open Line on 98.7 KISS FM. To reach Open Line, call 955-9870 or toll free 1-800-288-KISS. Okay, and welcome back. I'm Bob Slade along with James M. Tume, and it's our time to vent segment. And before we do, of course, uh, we like to give you an opportunity to do so at 955-9870. That's a vent line. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, we always uh, give our guest, uh, Bob Pickett, uh, Dr. Gardier, an opportunity to vent first. 30 seconds. Let me just uh, play a little vent music. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, we like to let everybody... Ventilation. Just ventilation. ventilation. <laughs> it's good for the soul, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. All right. It's time to vent. Vent. All right, Gardier, it's on you, brother. All right, man. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, several months ago, Colin Ferguson had shot several people on the Long Island Railroad. The media came out and said that it was a racist crime. He was motivated by racist thoughts. I came on your show and said the man was crazy, plain and simple. About three weeks ago, uh, a white man who was described as a paranoid schizophrenic shot several black men at a hotel in Jersey. The media clamped down that story. They didn't let us know that the victims were black, and they believe that he was psychotic and have attributed the crime to being psychosis. Very What's happening? Okay, let's go. Let's take the vent line. Good morning. Time to vent. You're on the air. Hello? Yes, it's you. I think O.J. has been tried and convicted by the media, and I don't think it's fair. And the reason the LAPD is leaking this information is to make him appear to have been capable of doing what they say he did. Because there's another side of the equation that has not come to, to the forefront. And when it does, then people are going to know that perhaps he, he, he may not be guilty of this. Okay, That's thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, time to vent. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Sean. I'm calling from Brooklyn. I think they let this thing drag out way too long. He interrupted the Nick game, and they could have put an end to it early. They could have stopped it instead of letting him trace through Los Angeles like he was on some presidential motorcade. All right. Thank you. All right. Time to vent. Good morning. My name is Denisha Shaw. I'm from Brooklyn. I would like to know, why right time a brother makes some money yet to marry a white woman, I would like, to, like for y'all to have a show on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, uh, time to vent. Hello. Yes, hello. My name is Samantha from Brooklyn, and I think everyone out there should focus all their positive energies towards the Knicks right now. Bob. They need us. OJ Simpson will be there for a while, and then we could concentrate on that afterwards. Okay, thank you. Bob time to vent. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that, that everybody look at this O.J. Simpson episode as a wake-up call in our community. We can no longer l hold our athletes up as, as these great American heroes. They are just simply human beings. The real heroes are your mothers and your fathers, your brothers and your sisters who get up every day and who go to work and make a living. Those are the heroes, and those are the people we should be looking to to honor. Well said. Time to vent. Hello. Hi, my name is Lydia Lawrence. I'm from Brooklyn. I believe this is a systematical setup, like with all black male, when they reach a certain peak in their career, that the system sets them up so they, they have to come down. Okay, thank you. Time to vent. Hello. Okay, you lost your time. Time to vent. <laughs> yes, this is Sonia from Queens, and yeah. I think that uh, we need to reflect back on our history during slavery, and I think that O.J. has had a media lynching, and I think that we need to wait and see what happens. Thank you. All right, take a couple more very quickly. Time to vent. Hello. Hello, this is James from Manhattan. Yeah. I think that he should get off just like the other white men. Okay. <laughs> Time to vent. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the, guy who, the guy who just said that he wonders why a guy who may have just killed his ex-wife and another guy might be a threat to his children is, is a moron. And also I'd like to say that, uh, what, what, that O.J. should have been in jail years ago for beating up his wife and if he threatened to kill her, he should have been in jail years ago and this never would have happened. And if she killed him in self-defense, it would be a thing like with the Lorena Bobbitt thing. Everybody would be blaming her. And, and Joe, Bragg, uh, Joe Bragg, how'd you hire that dummy? Oh, okay. <laughs> My goodness. All right, that's all the time that we have, folks. Okay, that is it. And uh, that is our program for this morning. I want to thank our guest. Great pleasure. It has been a pleasure having you guys. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, clinical psychologist, been with us many, many times. Dr. Gardier, thank you very much. If people want to get in touch with you, there's a telephone number, right? Yeah, they can call us at our Brooklyn office, 718-625-5896. All right, doctor. Doc, I keep wanting to call you doctor. I don't but, know but why. But you know, I am a doctor. You're a doctor, doctor of jurisprudence. Oh. Oh. Yes. 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 So you still right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Robert Pickett. A great uh, pleasure, Bob. It's and a I pleasure hope, having you with us. I hope to be back. We will have you back, and uh, who knows, we may be back here again, assembled like this, <laughs> for one more show on this. Gentlemen, Toombs, brother. As always, my brother. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the staff of the Overline, I'm Bob Slade. Keep a good thought and have a good Sunday. Uh, special assistance from our producer, Fatin Muhammad. I'm Bob Slade. You're listening to 98.7 KISS, WRKS, FM, New York. Sean Court, KISS Inspiration. Next.